One huge benefit to using REST in Rails is how much typing it saves us. And the reason why that's possible is because Rails gives us some great helper methods and syntax shortcuts that we can use in our links and in our forms. Let's take a look. Now that our Rails application can understand the new RESTful syntax, we'll need to modify our links and forms to make requests using that new syntax. So instead of having a hash with a controller, an action, and an ID, we can now use the much shorter subject path and then the ID as an argument to that helper. It saves us a lot of typing. Let's take a look at all the helpers. In this table, I have the same first three columns that we had in the last movie, the RESTful URL, which when combined with the HTTP verb in the second column, leads us to the correct controller action listed in the third column. The fourth column lists the URL helper method Rails provides to generate the correct URL and HTTP verb combination. It's essentially the helper that routes us to the right action. They're not so different from the URLs in the first column, just rearranged a bit to be more readable. But notice one thing important. Almost all of them have subject singular. That's because we're dealing with a singular member of the resource. With index and create, we're working with the resource collection as a whole. Either we're listing the collection, or we're adding a new item to that collection. So those two, and only those two, use the plural form. If the fourth column seems like a lot of information to memorize, notice that it's really just two main parts. Subjects underscore path, plural, and subject path, singular, followed by the ID. The three remaining helpers for new, edit, and delete are really just exactly like the helper used to get to the show action, except that they have new, edit, and delete in front of them. The same way that the resulting URL will have new, edit, and delete stuck at the end. Remember that those three are just convenience actions. They're just making get requests to get that information back again, the same way that the show action does. We're just displaying it in a different format this time, that is, as a web form. Also remember that delete is one that I added in my customizations. It's not built in by default. To see how these work in practice, if we wanted to have a URL that went to all of our subjects, we would just have a link to and then the target would just be subjects underscore path, and that would take us to our index page for all of the subjects. If we wanted to show a particular subject, we would use subject path, followed by the ID of the subject we wanted to show. If we wanted to edit a subject, well then we would just use edit subject path, followed by the ID. See how that works? We just stuck edit in front of it. Both of them are doing get requests to get information back from the database. New and delete would work exactly the same way as edit. If we had additional parameters that we wanted to pass into our URL, often we want to pass information like the page or the sort order, you would just put those as a hash as the second argument to your helper method. So right after you have the subject ID, then any other parameters that need to be passed into that helper would be included. And those would all become part of the URL string. So that takes care of links. But what about the forms? They all use post by default, right? We need to tell our update and destroy forms that they should be using patch and delete instead of post. To do that, you just add an option to your form to specify that the HTML method should be patch or delete. Pretty straightforward, but that's become quite a bit of typing. And once again, Rails gives us a shortcut, which is just to simply pass in the object to form for. If it's an unsaved object, then Rails will create the form to post it to the subject's path. If it's an already saved object, then Rails will create this form to patch it to subject path at subject ID. But that shortcut only works for post and for patch. For delete, you'll need to write it out the long way. It'll take some getting used to, but once it starts to make sense to you, the time that it saves you and the organization that it gives to your code will make using these form helpers well worth your while.